Hi, I'm Rebecca from Hoff Math. My website is hoffmath.com and my Teachers Pay Teacher store is Hoff Math with a space in between. I'm going to show you how I teach the unit circle using a paper plate. I love this activity. I first learned it when I was student teaching back in 1998, <coughs> excuse me, and I haven't found an activity since that really solidifies the student's understanding of the unit circle. Stick around to the end of the video because I have a special gift for you. Let's get started. The paper plate activity. Each student is going to need one paper plate and two different colored writing utensils. Make sure that you get these really cheap paper plates that are easy to fold and flatten. I always say they're terrible for barbecues, but they're great for this activity. As far as the writing utensils are concerned, I'm going to use Sharpie, but it can be colored pencils, a pen and a pencil, a pencil and a highlighter. It doesn't matter as long as they are two different colors. And the blue paper here is just to show contrast in this video because I have a black desk and a bright light. As you're passing the paper plates out to your students, tell them to go ahead and flatten their plate as much as they can. Once the paper plate is as flat as they can make it, then I ask them a couple of questions. For example, what if I wanted to find the center of the plate? Somebody will usually suggest that we measure it, but I don't have a ruler. And then they suggest we fold it in half, and I say, okay, if we fold it in half once, that's definitely going to give us the diameter, and the center is on the diameter, um, but how am I going to find where the actual center is? And then somebody will suggest to fold it in half again. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, now that we have our paper plate folded in half and we can identify the center, I also point out that we not only can we identify the center, but we can also have created some axes, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. So we're going to take one of our colors, I'm going to tell them that they need one color to be their primary color and the other color to be their secondary color and to stick with the primary color until I tell them to change. So they're going to take their primary color and highlight those axes. Once we've highlighted the axes, then I'll say, all right, I'm going to tell you that the radius of the circle is one. Tell me everything you know about the circle. Somebody will usually say something about the area, um, but eventually we want to get to talking about the circumference. They might take a few seconds to remember the formula for circumference, which is 2 pi r. All right, let's talk about that. The radius is one. Um, the circumference is 2 pi r, which means that the circumference is going to be 2 pi. So the circumference is like the perimeter. So if I wanted to travel, if I picked this as my starting point and I wanted to travel counterclockwise, or sometimes I'll be British and say anti-clockwise, around my plate and then I end up back here, how far have I traveled? And they would say two pi. Great, I'm gonna label this as my starting point of zero and my stopping point of two pi. Now as I'm doing this, I will do this with the students where I'm writing down on my own paper plate and then I will hold it up in front of them. Um, they're working in groups and so they can kind of see what I've done and just model what I'm doing. Okay, students, if I wanted to travel halfway around my plate, how far have I gone? One pi, okay? I'm gonna label this side over here, one pi. Great. Now, what if I wanted to travel up here? So I'm going this from here to here is one pi, but I wanna go up to this point right here Somebody will say a half a pi. Great, let's call that pi over two. Um, so now I know that a quarter of the plate, and we can fold it back here like this, a quarter of the plate is a half of a pi, but what if I wanted to go all the way around down to here? So this is one half of pi, this is two halves of pi, this down here would be three halves of pi, or three pi over two, and then over here would be two halves of pi, uh, I'm sorry, four halves of pi, which is the same thing as two pi. And at some point, I'll usually start talking about how we can continue going around the circle as many times as we want to. So if we're counting by halves of pi, that's one half of pi, two halves of pi, three halves of pi, four halves of pi, I keep going, now we're at five halves of pi, six halves of pi, and so on. Now, what if I wanted to, I'm gonna fold my plate again. So I tell the students to take their plate back to this much of the plate, so a quarter of the plate, and fold it in half again. All right, now that I have folded my plate again, I have new creases. Still working with the primary color, I'm gonna highlight those creases with a dashed line. Okay, and then now I, ask, I will ask the students, how far is it to go from zero to this new crease that we've just highlighted? 
And somebody might figure out that it's going to be a quarter of pie because we took a half a pie and we cut it in half, so that's going to make a quarter of a pie. So we're going to label this line pi over 4. Now we can count by fourths of pi. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which of course is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and then at this point I'll ask the students to work with the groups and see if they can figure out how to label these two creases in quadrants 3 and quadrants 4. So the students have figured out that this is 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and we can keep going and call this 8 pi over 4 or 2 pi. We can keep going still and call that 9 pi over 4 and so on and so forth. All right, so we have these labeled. Now we're going to fold the plate one more time. Now here's where it's going to get tricky. You need to get the plate to this much, so a quarter of the plate, and then you're going to have to fold it. Students always think that we're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again, or the other mistake that they make is they take this side and fold it into the crease. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is actually take this much of the plate and fold it into three equal sections. So it's going to be kind of tricky. I think about it as kind of making an ice cream cone. So I need to kind of bring this in. I'm going past the crease. And then um, you have to really work it here at the vertex that we're creating of this cone. And you can see here that it's really tricky. Um, and the, this is why we need the cheap plates. And this plate is actually quite strong, so it's kind of hard to get in there. But we, we're looking here, we've got three equal sections, or attempting to get three equal sections here that will then just flatten it. And so I'll walk around the room and help the students, and sometimes I'll get it started for them, and then they'll do the flattening. This is the hardest fold to do, and it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Okay, when we open our plate back up, we now have two new creases in each quadrant. And I'm going to take now my secondary color, and I'm going to highlight these new creases with a dashed line. And now I want to figure out how much is it to get from zero here to this first crease. So sometimes I will start by saying, well, remember, we took a half a pie and we divided it into one, two, three equal sections. And you have to be careful here because you're trying to ignore that pie over four line that we have. So one, two, three equal sections of pi over two. So how much is one of them going to be? And they'll usually figure out that you have to do pi over two and divide by three or one third of pi over two, which is pi over six. Another way to see it is we're looking at we zero to pi, we have six equal sections. One, two, three, four, and here's the fifth one, and then the sixth one. So six equal sections to get out to pi, so each one of them is going to be one-sixth of pi, or pi over six. So that's one pi over six. This will be two pi over six, which is pi over three. Three pi over six, which is pi over two. And then four pi over six, which is two pi over three. 5 pi over 6, and then I'll have the students finish out into quadrants 3 and 4. So I've labeled my new creases, and of course we can keep on going. You know, here this was uh, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6 is the same thing as 2 pi, and so on. Now at this point, I would give each student a copy of a blank unit circle like this, and I would give them a few minutes to go ahead and label their uh, angles in the radian measurements and remind them that the reason this is called the unit circle is because one of the first things I said was, what if your radius was equal to 1? And then after we do the radian measurements, and I usually tell the students to label them on the outsides of the circle, we would go through and talk about the degrees. And the degrees are much easier because they know 360 degrees, and then that's going to be 180 and 90, and then cut 90 in half and you get 45, and then you can cut 180 into six equal sections, and each one of them is 30. So that is easy enough. The next thing I want to show you is how I uh, teach getting the coordinates of the angles on a unit circle. I usually do this on a separate day, the second day after I've taught the, the paper plate activity, because also with the paper plate activity, you've got to get in uh, negative angles and coterminal angles and converting from radius degrees and so on. So they come back uh, the next day, and we're now, they already have this information memorized. And then I'll take a few minutes. Now, this is for my honors pre-calculus class. I only need to take a few minutes to remind them about special right triangles, but if you had an on-level class, then you may want to take a bit more time. So for the 45, 45, 90 triangles, it's pretty easy to remember. 
that the two legs are going to be the same length, and then we might take a little bit of work, or we just would might remember that the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 2 times the length of one leg. So the hypotenuse is root 2 times the leg. Then for a 30, 60, 90 triangle, everything is based off of the short leg. If the short leg is n, then the hypotenuse is twice that, and then the uh, long leg is a square root of 3 times that. So hypotenuse is twice the short leg, the long leg is a square root of 3 times the short leg. Or whatever way you use to teach special right triangles. This is the way that works for me. Now this next part, I usually do this on the whiteboard. So I'll draw uh, the first quadrant of the unit circle huge on my whiteboard, but I'm just going to use my PowerPoint for now. And you will get free access to this PowerPoint after this presentation. Let's focus on just on pi over 6. Now here's my origin for my unit circle. Uh, so up here, of course, is pi over 2. And one of the first things I want to ask, I don't have 0 or 2 pi here labeled, but if I wanted to travel from 0 over here to, I'm sorry, from the origin over here to 0 or 2 pi, what would be the coordinates that I would use to get there? Reminding them that the radius is 1. So they'll come up with the fact that you have to go um, to the right 1 and up and down 0. And if I wanted to travel from the origin up here to pi over 2, that would be 0 comma 1. Okay. We call those your quadrant angles. So of course the radius is 1. And then I'll say what I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular. There it is. And if the radius is 1, um, well, we you already know that pi over 6 is 30 degrees, so I really have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The radius is 1, so what's going to be the length of my short leg over here? Uh, and they'll come up with, uh, oh, it's going to be 1 half. All right, now what's going to be the length of my long leg if my short leg is a half? Oh, well, it's going to be 1 half times the square root of 3, or in other words, the square root of 3 over 2. So that means if I wanted to travel from the origin up here to this point that we have labeled as pi over 6, I have to go to the right root 3 over 2, and up 1 half. So long leg, comma, short leg. And there we go. And the students are writing this down on their blank, on their unit circle that they have in front of them. And then we do the same thing with pi over 4. We, we're, my radius is 1. We drop a perpendicular. So now I've got a 45, 45, 90 triangle where the radius is, I'm sorry, the hypotenuse is 1. And so we figure that one leg is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 2 since we're going back to the leg instead of from the leg to the hypotenuse. And then you can rationalize that and get that to be the square root of 2 over 2. And the other leg, of course, would be the same thing. So if I wanted to travel from the origin up here to this point that's labeled as pi over 4, I have to go to the right pi over 2 and up, sorry, to the right root 2 over 2 and up the square root of 2 over 2. So those are my coordinates. And then it starts to move a little bit faster because pi over 3 is the same thing, uh, similar coordinates of um, pi over 6. So we drop our perpendicular. 60, 30, 60, 90 triangle, but now the short leg is the horizontal leg. So that means that the short leg is going to be 1 half. The long leg is going to be root 3 over 2. So if I wanted to travel from the origin up here to this point, I'm going to the right root 2 over 2, and then I'm going up root 3 over 2. And then I will tell the students that they are going to take their time to label the other quadrants of the unit circle on their paper because, and we're talking also about if I wanted to go to 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3, I'm going left and then I'm going up. And so I'm going left a short distance and up a long distance, so that's why it's going to be the negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. And then if I wanted to get to pi, 5 pi over 6, I'm going left the long distance and up the short distance, so that's why the first coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2, which is the long leg, and then the second coordinate is 1 half and so on and so forth. And of course, I tell the students that not to forget to label the quadrant angles. That would be your pi 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and also that they have to memorize the unit circle. If you liked what you saw today, then go to that bit.ly link at the bottom of your screen. There, you can join my email list, and then I will send you the PowerPoint that I use to teach the radians and the degrees with all of the examples, the PowerPoint that I use to teach the coordinates and all of the examples, a blank unit circle and a completed unit circle, and I'll send you some ideas for other activities you might be interested in. Don't forget, go to that link. Thank you.